The wait for Season 4 has indeed been a lengthy one. With more time between this season than any other season previously, fans are eager to return to the story of Camp Cretaceous and follow the campers as they have finally escaped the doomed reality of Isla Nublar. Before we jump back into this Jurassic World animated adventure, let's recap that third season. If you need a recap of the first and second season, check out the links to those videos in the description. Season 3 opens with the campers making an escape attempt from the shores of Isla Nublar. It all looks good for the campers. They're on a homemade castaway style raft, excitedly anticipating the journey ahead of them. Suddenly, and very conveniently for the story, a rogue wave throws them back to the shores of the island, destroying the raft and their hopes of escape in the process. The campers are back to square one. Gathering supplies and heading back to their base camp at the remains of Camp Cretaceous, the group attempt to refine their raft design with an improved sail and decide to head to the lookout point to scavenge a hand glider. Up at one of the highest points of Jurassic World, Yasmina discovers dinosaur nests before the group are attacked by a very affectionate bunch of dimorphodons. The flying reptiles have made this mountain their nest and chase the campers away. Luckily, however, from this viewpoint, Kenji and Sammy spot Tiff and Mitch's boat from the previous season adrift offshore, seemingly still afloat. After making it down there and having some fun on the boat, the group board and realize the boat is out of fuel and desperately in need of repairs. After their disaster at the beginning of the season, finding a floating, almost working boat definitely gives the gang inspiration to escape the island once again and they head to the North Dock to scavenge for fuel. Meanwhile, something new and deadly lurks in the jungles of Isla Nublar. Back at the North Dock, the fog begins to roll in and mysterious grunts, sounds and wails can be heard throughout the mist, before an angry pack of Iranosaurs attacks the campers, forcing them to retreat back to the boat. <laughs> Bumpy helps save the day along with Mitch and Tiff's fireworks and Darius begins to wonder why the island's ecosystem is changing so rapidly. Aranosaurs out of their area, Compies disappearing from camp, Darius believes the island is out of balance. Meanwhile, something new and deadly lurks in the jungles of Isla Nublar. Adrift at sea in a fuelless boat, Kenji suddenly realizes that there is another dock where the kids could... dock? A private dock that's not on any map. A private pier that serves private apartments on the island, including Kenji's father's private penthouse, which he'd forgotten about until now. The gang heads there with Brooklyn's all-access pass, glide on segways through the jungle, pass a couple of monolophosaurs, and make it to the giant hotel-sized building where Kenji's father's private penthouse is located. Heading inside, the campers indulge on all the penthouse has to offer, similar to the scene in Jurassic Park, and we learn a little bit more about Kenji's relationship with his father. The gang also drink water. That's not water. That's an experience. Outside, Bumpy attempts to defend the building from the onslaught of hungry and inquisitive monolophosaurs who make their way through the vents and into Kenji's father's private penthouse suite. <laughs> The campers battle with these new dinosaurs before finally escaping through the elevator shafts and make it back to the safety of the boat. Unseen by our distracted campers, the newest arrival to the jungles of Isla Nublar takes down Manticore's drone, which appears to still be spying on the island. The campers repair the boat with a lunch tray. Pronounce this vessel seaworth. And while waiting for the work to dry, have their compass stolen by a curious compie. Following it through the jungle, Kenji, Yasmina, and Darius run into an abandoned Jurassic World staff vehicle before finding the ruins of the legacy, the Jurassic Park Visitor's Center. In here, the trio encounter Blue, but manage to escape. Hiding in the staff vehicle, Blue continues to attack before ending up pinned beneath the vehicle itself. Darius and co scramble to rescue her, and Darius conducts his best Owen Grady impression before running away from Blue. All the while this is happening, Brooklyn and Sammy search for evidence that will help free Sammy's family from the control of Manticore, who tasks Sammy with smuggling dinosaur DNA off of the island. 
While searching through the underground location, the two discovered Dr. Wu's video journals that document his creation of the E750 hybrid dinosaur, a failed precursor to the Indominus Rex, and discover that the dinosaur has escaped from its cryostasis. With a storm now rapidly approaching the island, and with the discovery that an all new threat awaits the campers, the gang gather supplies and attempt to fortify their treehouse against a potential attack from the Scorpius Rex. When the attack comes, the gang manage to fend the creature off for long enough, but it does manage to sting Sammy with one of its venomous quills. Using the fuel they collected for the boat, they create a distraction for the hybrid which successfully gets it to retreat from the area, while Yaz runs into the subterranean lab to retrieve the anti-venom, the antidote. With the storm clearing and Sammy returning to health, the gang begin to make their way back to the boat, but Ben separates from the group to say goodbye to Bumpy. The gang get caught in a stampede of bioluminescent parasaurol offices before making it to the boat. Meanwhile, the E750 hybrid, the Scorpius Rex, finds Ben and Darius in the jungle and begins approaching before revealing that there are now two Scorpius Rexes, evolved through parthenogenesis. Two is better than one after all. <laughs> Yasmina, Sammy, and Kenji help reunite a lost baby Brachiosaur with its mother before reconnecting with Ben and Darius. The group make their way to the visitor center again, this time encountering both the Scorpius Rexes and reenact the kitchen scene from Jurassic Park. While making an escape, the building's dilapidated ceiling eventually gives way, seemingly crushing both the hybrids in its rubble. Blue and the kids escape unharmed. The gang find their way back to the boat and finally escape Isla Nublar. Or do they? Through the stormy heavy rains, helicopters fly above the boat and towards Isla Nublar, demanding that they return to the island. The timeline catches up with Fallen Kingdom here, and the gang watch in horror as one of the helicopters is attacked by Lady Rex herself. Ben, Kenji, and Sammy are picked up by one of the mercenaries, but the helicopter is swiftly attacked by angry Pteranodons, bringing down the chopper in a very Simon Mizrani-esque crash. While this is happening, the rest of the campers pursue the mercenaries through the jungle, eventually leading them to Dr. Henry Wu, who has returned to the island with mercenaries from the Lockwood Foundation. The campers intervene to prevent the scientist from leaving with his research papers on the Scorpius Rex. The Monolophosaurs make another appearance and take out the mercenaries, while the kids retrieve data from the laptop. Brooklyn distracts Dr. Wu, and the character himself is fleshed out a bit here, having a moment in the jungle where he reminisces on the creation of bioluminescent dinosaurs. He's proud of his creations, probably something he can't say for the Scorpius. After the data is copied, Kenji returns the laptop to Dr. Wu in exchange for Brooklyn, and he escapes the island, and yes, fully grown adults leave stranded kids on the island. The group have a touching moment here with Bumpy, before finally returning to the boat and setting sail for anywhere but Isla Nublar. Saying goodbye to the island, we begin to hear banging from inside the hull, alluding that something has made its way on board. And that is what happens in the third season of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Personally, my favorite of the three seasons, I wonder what the fourth will have in store for us. Season four is tracking to be quite a season for the show and will likely expand more into the lore of Jurassic World and we'll finally get to see locations outside of the islands. It really is a Jurassic World. Thank you for watching our recap. Did you like the third season? And how excited are you for the fourth? Let us know down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed our recap, then hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Jurassic content. Don't forget to check out the Jurassic Outpost store for Jurassic themed clothing, mugs, masks and more. And check out the video description for discounts and deals with our various partners. As always, head to JurassicOutpost.com for more news and information.